Hi, you're watching Nerdy News on VideoGamesBlogger.com. I'm your host, Laura, and today I'll be filling you in on the latest in gaming news. Lawmakers just can't seem to leave gamers alone. Bill 978, or the Commercial Felony Streaming Act, would make unauthorized streaming of copyrighted material a felony. The penalty would include up to five years of prison time. It defines illegal streaming as streaming 10 or more times in a 180-day period. Furthermore, the value of the illegally streamed material would have to be greater than $2,500 or the licensing fees would have to be over $5,000. There is some concern as to whether the bill would affect those streaming video games and posting videos on YouTube. However, the bill does not directly address this. Although it is an unknown whether the law would be enforced as such, there has been an outcry against the bill on YouTube and other such video streaming sites. The main purpose of the bill is to strengthen the law and punishments available to organizations such as the MPAA and other content conglomerates to stop illegal streaming of millions upon millions of dollars in stolen entertainment. As is the way of things, gamers might be caught in the crossfire. Chinese company Lenovo is setting up to launch a Kinect clone game console called iSec. Console gaming isn't particularly big in China, in large part because the sales of video game consoles is illegal there. There is a thriving gray market for them anyway, but that's not something the system makers make much profit from, and game developers literally make nothing since the games for gray market consoles are usually pirated. The console ban does exist on paper, but it is not strictly enforced. Piracy, on the other hand, is doing more to keep game consoles out of China than any government edict ever could. Sony released the PlayStation 2 in China in January of 2004. The launch was a disaster with rampant game piracy and of the hardware itself. While it wasn't exactly the financial success Sony might have been hoping for, it did build a brand name for the company. Nintendo's Wii has been copied by a Chinese company and released as the V, a game system that runs preloaded motion controller games. Sony's PS3 has been knocked off as the winner. Pirated version of consoles and PC games are prevalent. So is iSec as a game console even legal to sell in China? Lenovo says yes because, and they're seriously arguing this, it isn't a game console, it's a home entertainment device. Their argument seems to be that gaming is just merely one of the console's functions. It can also play movies and music. Of course, so can the banned Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles and even the PS2 and the original Xbox could play CDs and DVDs. But Lenovo is a Chinese company, and there's some indication that they may be allowed to take their product to a market in China even though it's very clearly a gaming console. Ironically, the Wii, the PS3, and the Xbox 360 are Chinese made, and there's a flourishing PC gaming culture in China. The government thought that the best way to protect Chinese youth from wasting their minds on video games after a parental outcry was to ban consoles altogether. The following year, online gaming exploded and the market size hit $100 million. If iSec is approved as an entertainment device, why on earth should anyone in China actually buy one? Lenovo will have a hard time offering titles that are on par with the titles offered by American and Japanese developers. Also, pirated discs for the Xbox 360 titles are basically free. Why pay $40 for one iSec game when you can get five great Xbox 360 games for $2? Why even buy an iSec? Pricing for the iSec games isn't clear yet, and the console will come bundled with at least one game, but there is simply no way that developers could afford to offer games at the prices for which pirated games are offered. So regardless of whether the pricing is really $40 a game or not, you can be sure that iSec games are going to cost way more than pirated games. Now for some games releasing this week. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is the second part of a two-part action-adventure video game developed for Microsoft Windows, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the Wii. The game continues to follow Harry and his friends, who set out to defeat Lord Voldemort by destroying the remaining Horcruxes, items which contain part of his soul. The gameplay of Deathly Hallows Part 2 will differ from Part 1 in order to address complaints made with the previous game. The game will progress linearly through cutscenes, but will not include side missions like pr the previous game. 
Combat in Deathly Hallows Part 2 involves button presses which initiates spell casting as an attack. That's all the news I have for today. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Love and peace from my PC viewers.